Chin Chow. What's up, everybody? All right, we're walking around in Phnom Nang, Phnom Nang, in Cambodia. I'll get it right. Don't worry. You know how I am. <laughs> so the the topic of today is, you know, is Cambodia viable for you to wait in till Vietnam opens? And as usual with these type of videos, we're gonna get directly to the point. We got some fried plantains. We're gonna get right into the point. And yes, 100%. If, if I was you and I wanted to be in Southeast Asia, you know, you can stay here easily for two months, I think by just renewing the tourist one once. And then you can get six months for like $300. Somebody did at the hostel yesterday. So super affordable, to be honest with you, to uh, get a visa. Rent, you can get an apartment for like 200, 250 bucks. It's not gonna be a beautiful apartment. Granted, it's gonna be an old building, but I imagine since you've probably been on lockdown two years from whatever country you are, that you're gonna be going nuts and going out. So having a nice place is not key to the success story. But what is this, the complete amount of freedom that's happening here, you know? There is a mass mandate, but most Westerners don't wear it, so I just kind of join the join the program. Like I'll wear it in the hotel and in the elevator. Again, I've never been like a taking my freedom away with a mask type guy. So, but yeah, the similarities are so strong. You know, I talked about it in Thailand or the Cambodia video, and just to double down on that thought, I would way pick Cambodia over Thailand. And that's a general feel. I've met so many expats that have just come from Vietnam from an exit visa and or came from Thailand on an exit visa as well. And both have the same thing to say. They, they would choose Cambodia over Thailand and they would take it as a resting place till, you know, things can potentially open again. Which, you know, the big rumor in Vietnam is March 31st. There wasn't a big uptick in TET numbers, so it looks like it's gonna go just fine. You know, everybody's got their third jab there. Everybody's working on their third jab here. Most people are getting uh, Pfizer or Moderna for their third jab or their fourth jab. A lot of people have already had the third jab of Sino, Sino Farm here, it's the, the Chinese vaccine. That's predominantly what Cambodia used for it. But the state of freedom is, uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Plenty of things to do. Plenty of hot ladies, if that's what you're looking for. I'm married, so that isn't my uh, my main uh, <laughs> reason to be here. My reason is pretty much to just document that it's cool to be here right now and the shit that you can come do when you are here. We're gonna go to CM Reap pretty quick here in a couple of days. Maybe tomorrow. And we're gonna go to the islands. So I'm gonna give you a fair shot at Cambodia and exactly everything it has to offer. As I've talked about with price, it's about 5% to 10% more expensive for most things. It's right even, it's really close. I would say it's more evenly priced than, than more expensive. Depends on what you're getting to. You know, you can find bars with 75 cent beers. Then you can find bars with dollar beers, and you can find bars with dollar twenty-five beers. So it all depends on, you know, what what kind of stuff you're staying at. As far as area goes, I like to stay in B BKK. I like a modern, newer hotel. I like to be comfortable. I don't want to hear the people above me having a conversation at two a.m. I don't want to hear doors slamming all night. And uh, most of the places I found on the Riverside were way older hotels. And charging the same price for like what a brand new hotel would go for here in BKK. So for me, BKK, I'm not gonna spend, it's even more money over on the Riverside and I couldn't find one, you know, a place that warranted the price. I found plenty of good hotels if you saw in that Hotel Vunt video, but they were just like $55 for crap. Like I just couldn't, I couldn't get my head around that. Like. They should probably start renovating those hotels down there to compete with this BKK area because everyone's staying at, you go into any of these nice hotels in BKK, the entire thing is just full. And then hostels are extremely full. And then those hotels we looked at were not that full. So the, the way to do it, and if you want to meet people here, just go to a hostel, go to Mad Monkey 
or, or Sanders, whatever the one I'm at, I go to at Chris's place. And you can meet people all day long from all over the world. Cool as shit people, so I would say the way to go is to, if you're gonna cheap Charlie it, stay at a hostel. Stay at a hostel, because there's just gonna be way more shit and people to meet. Like they have pub crawls lined up for you, like all kinds of stuff. Check my phone. Always gotta watch for phone thieves. Seventeen-minute walk. That's okay. We can walk for seventeen minutes and talk. As far as the food goes, lots of Western food that's of high quality. And then the food here is not bad at all. It's just not very spicy. It's it's a lot like Vietnamese food, just minus all the spices. And then there's lots of Thai dishes here, and there's lots of Chinese food as well. I would say Chinese food dominates the hardest from what I've seen. And then with Cambodian food, and then Thai food, Western food. And then there's a lot of Korean barbecues and a lot of Japanese omakazis. There's high-end omakazis too. There's a a lot of yakitori. Yeah, there's a lot of different sushi, you know, just regular sushi. Omokaze is very expensive. It's like a, you know, 18, 20 course, three hour meal. If you've never done one, just make sure you vet it as a good uh, place. And for me, since I love sushi, it's worth the uh, 100 bucks a person. Probably on the cheapest end for that. But you see massive amounts of Chinese food, like massive. Mapo tofu, Sichuan noodles, all that stuff. As you can see here, walking by some uh, fusion type food. But yeah, the, the way to meet people, I would definitely just hang out at the hostel. Like we did the uh, happy pizza yesterday. Watch that happy pizza too, man. Like, if you want to see that video on how strong those happy pizzas are, they're using Kymar tobacco. I keep saying, but you can figure out what that means. But that's over on the Patreon only, man. That shit will jack you up, son. I was on a roller coaster ride for six hours, minimum. Neither of us were expecting it because it just tasted like trim on top of the pizza. But to be fair, I'm a complete, like, uh, lightweight when it comes to that stuff now. I don't, I don't use the ganja. I think I'm walking the wrong way on this terrible map. It does not give me good instructions. For some reason, the Google Maps doesn't work very properly in uh, Cambodia. Everything else works fine. Like, the Google Maps, rarely centered properly. I've updated, restarted too. Maybe that's just like a Cambodia thing with the way that the satellites are aligned and stuff around here. I don't know. It's okay. We can walk extra. It's good exercise. I don't mind one bit. Lots of things getting rebuilt and redone here. Lots of new stores coming up because you know they've got all the tourists coming, so people are willing to take that that gamble again. We got a nice new hotel coming up here. I really can't recommend, uh, if you want nice, comfortable, safe neighborhood, BKK, BKK1. Especially if you like, have zero interest in the local cuisine and you just want to eat Western food, it's everywhere around here. And I've been doing very well on the diet. Like, uh, I'm eating one meal a day and I'm eating all meats. You know, I had one slice of the pizza. And Crazy Man ate the rest of the pizza. And I haven't heard from him since yesterday, since like 6 p.m. Supposedly he's sleeping too. Yeah, we ate the pizza at like 5. By 6.30 I was back in my hotel in my bed and I didn't wake up till 8 a.m. It just was a complete day killer and ruined like a whole night of filming. So I can't say, if you're a lightweight, just go with the lightest Example of that pizza if you want to try it because we went with the middle one and holy shit Yeah, you got to just if you want to see that video. It's for the patrons only so I've been creating a, a lot of unique content for patrons only on this trip and then we're just gonna continue that because The biggest exit question was not enough content on there even though there's usually like 10 to 15 
early access videos. People also want unique content on there. So now, you know, anything that's crazy nightlife stuff gets parked on there. So if you want to see that, join the Patreon however much you want, no big deal. If you don't want to see bonus content, don't even worry about it. So yeah, this is a really up and coming built area. Oh, by the way, I was able to screw my uh, implant back in on myself. So I didn't have to go to the dentist. I went home and hand sanitized my hands. I figured it screwed in like a screw. And there you go, so that's all good. Got some mouthwash, but make sure it's clean. So no big deal with that. Again, if you're gonna use your phone on a street, you wanna back off the street, come to the side. So now we walk down, we walk down a couple of blocks and take a left. Okay. I think it completely had us go the wrong way. Which is okay, I don't mind. But yeah, Thai food's a lot like, uh, or not Thai food, Cambodian food, Kashmir food is a lot, Khmer, I mean, is a lot like uh, a fusion of Thailand and Vietnam without the spices. You can find like a banh mi, but it's missing all the stuff on it. You can find it even kind of like a pho, but that's usually run by a Vietnamese, so that, that doesn't taste too bad. Mind you, I haven't eaten any of it. I've just watched people eat it and describe it. You know, I've had a very, I've had Carl's Jr. Had some guy's burger restaurant. We had uh, Papa John's. These are all videos already filmed and shot. We had Papa John's. And then yesterday I had one slice of the pizza. And then I had a, a bacon double cheeseburger with no fries, just a, and now I've been kind of taking the top one off and just doing the bottom bun. You don't need all that bread on them. You don't notice it until you try it, but once you take a burger and just take the top bun off, or even the bottom if you really want, but the top bun is usually easier to take off. You don't miss that top piece, man. And you don't miss fries. You know, I'll get a few sprinkled with it, but I only need two or three or four. It's just really the burger. And today I've had nothing. So, it's uh, 2.30. I already did my uh, swimming in the pool. And then if you get like a hotel like mine, that's like, you know, 40, 42 bucks a night, it's gonna have a full pool and it's gonna have a full gym. And the average rate for a gym is five to 10 bucks a day. So you can just calculate five, $10 in. You know, that takes the cost down into the 30s for me. And then I use the pool and then we have a sauna. I use the sauna. So you could probably take another five out for that. There's not many gyms have a pool, and that usually costs an additional fee. So all my cardio is done in the pool now. I've scrapped running, and it's been working so much better. You know, walk like 15, 20,000 steps a day. Swim, you know, for about 22 minutes of continuous, like, laps. I'm at a small pool right now. So, yeah, I've been maintaining Working out and dieting on vacation, which I don't know if you've ever tried before, is extremely difficult. Not that it's really a vacation, this is more a workcation for me. Maybe I'll take a left up here at this one. Again, I still like walking everywhere. And I mean, the sidewalks are actually arguably a bit nicer here. There's less traffic. Uh, the, the weather is identical. It's a little bit hotter here. The, so like the differences are so good and then the differences are not much at all that, yeah, dude, if you need three to four to five to six to seven, eight months before Vietnam opens, which I don't think it'll take you that long, come stay here. You're right there once it opens. You can be to Vietnam, just don't accumulate a bunch of shit here, you know, live that, that low item lifestyle like I do. And you can get here in a few days. The ticket's gonna be expensive, 200, 300 bucks, but once you're in, you're in. You know, I've had a bunch of people come back in with their uh, TRCs, no problem. So, if you do have a TRC or a five-year visa exemption, you can just go to Vietnam now. Like, so many people are, have done it with little issues. You know, I haven't heard any horror stories from anybody, so. It's a, sh it's a shame they should have done that a little sooner. I think everybody's gonna adopt this model. It's, it's working here, you know. So, 
you know, don't kill it if it works. Let's see. We're walking the right way. Yeah, we just walked the complete wrong direction for the first, I don't know, 10 minutes, and it let me. But now I looked at like the end destination and I know where we're going. I'm kind of excited to check out AM Mall. My guess is it's gonna be nearly identical. Supposedly all these hotels are built for the Chinese, which I'm fine with. I like creature comforts too, so. You know, there's lots of China money flowing around. I think they're forever in debt to China. So this is most likely a country that's in the pocket of uh, the CCP. You got a beauty center over here, which most likely is plastic surgery. That's usually what these are in America. They're not just a beauty center. You can get collagen, you know, all kinds of injections and shit too. Nice little house for rent. If you want to rent a house in a good area, I'll pause for you. You can figure that out on your own. But I, I quite enjoy and feel, I feel completely safe. Now, you could probably get into some trouble in some shady areas, like Riverside becomes pretty crazy at 2 a.m., but still, even walking around there at 2 a.m., I felt fine. You just grab a grab when you're done and get out of there. I met quite a lot of subscribers, all really nice people. A couple guys starting their YouTube channel up. It's a little bit discouraging at first, homies. You just got to keep making videos, though. And if you have enough follow-through and conviction, and you actually have some kind of, like, skill set at the back end of it, your channel will eventually take off. Yeah, when you're in the shade, it's not a bad walk at all. There's a nice little cool breeze that comes. You don't really usually get that breeze. And then you got a nice apartment complex here. So if you want to live into an apartment, this would be a good area. This one's called Hamptons Apartments. So maybe check the price if you're doing a long-term stay. I'm sure they're accommodating to a three to six month lease for a little bit more money. And then of course you'll get your discount at a year lease. And I really think you could actually do a year here, no problem. There's definitely differences between like you know, here in Saigon in particular. We're gonna compare the two because that seems to be what happens. Like, definitely party streets are better in Vietnam pre-COVID. So I think you'll see much more of a pump once people can get in and the flights don't cost a billion dollars. I think the safe bet is gonna be to come to Cambodia now, hang out, even if they do open March 31st, wait another month after that till the flights are super regular again and then super cheap. And there you go. And then, you know, since Cambodia is so nice and it's actually so cheap to do, you can just do the bus, like after things are open for visa runs. You don't even have to worry about your visa. You can just do a visa run here, hang out for a few nights, or you can just do what a lot of people did, just take the bus back and forth. But I, I would say <clears throat> the way to go once you have to do visa runs again is just come hang out here for like a couple nights, plan a nice trip around it. Because, you know, you, you plan and come on the weekend, you're going to have a good party. The weekday is not good. Like, that's your two differences. You can always find something, like, pumping in uh, Saigon pretty much every night in some area of town. Admittedly, I haven't completely explored that much. It really seems like Riverside in this area are the places to be, food, etc., etc. The plan is to go to CM Reap, do those islands, I do like a day or two at each place. I'm not going to be filming any museums and shit like this. It's all about death and like the killing fields and that content just never does well at all. People aren't watching my channel for a uh, history lesson on how this country killed a third of its population in 1979. So that stuff I'll leave. If you want to do that, you know, I recommend it. It's all off opening site. For sure, the killing fields and stuff like this definitely will bring up emotions, but for me, not gonna get filmed, not gonna be put on the channel. You got an Ichiban here, which is good stuff. Korean barbecue and water is the, the dummy way to, to explain it. Got 10 more minute walk up. And yeah, we kind of went over budget in the last video. 
you can eat really cheap, you can eat really expensive, you know, you can live for 10 bucks a day, you can live for 100 bucks a day. These are all dependent on what you're gonna do that day. So, do you feel me? So it's what you make of it. Wow, we are looking for a barista six. Service and order six. Demi chef four. Bar staff four. Food runner four. So if you need a job, holy Christmas. Moo Moo Steakhouse. I imagine that's gonna be the consensus. Oh, here's the worldwide, the WWF of Cambodia. Nice building. But it's very viable. There's, you know, I'm having a fantastic time here. I've got zero complaints as of now. Besides, I could use more money, and when can't we use more money? This is life, you know? But for, for, I can't wait to see, see him reap. People say it's always better, but I'm hesitant on that. Maybe for tourist stuff, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. And then the islands at Anchor Wat, I think everyone says to go to. And we're going to do the Silk Island and all these places. So probably going to do the night boat today. So I'm going to shoot this AM mall. Oh, where are we at here? 22 minutes? I'm going to shoot this AM mall in a minute. And then after AM mall, I'm going to head over to his area. I still haven't even heard from him today. He, he kind of just does his own thing during the day and edits, so I sit up at the pool there. Because I do all my editing when I wake up. It's done by, you know, I'm done and uploaded by 11 every day. <coughs> and if you want to see the early content, it's on Patreon. All the videos are already up early, so if you're really keen to see Cambodia the videos ahead of everyone else and kind of feel a little special, it's on the Patreon. And of course, if you don't want to do Patreon, you can just do, you know, single tip through PayPal or, or never give anything at all. Just watching the video helps the channel. But you, you do have to talk about these things on occasion. I, I usually don't, but yeah. if you don't say it, then some people don't even know it exists. Simple as that. I do like the tuk-tuk scenario a lot. It's a little expensive, though. It's about a dollar a ride everywhere. But again, comparative to Vietnam's grab. I'm still gonna say it's safer to ride the tuk-tuk. Some people say, oh, I make great negotiations with the random tuk-tuk driver. I don't know. I don't wanna hang out with him and his buddies and go to a whorehouse, so like, for me, I'd rather just take the grab driver. There's no sell me an extra service, just go to place one to place two. No need to tell him how to go there. He doesn't need to know how to go there. He just opens the app takes the app, get you there. We gotta cross the road here. Down this little cool alley. I mean, you can still go to Thailand. You know, all the guys here that just got back from BKK were not very happy with BKK though, so let me just spin it that way for you so you understand, you know, if you get what I'm saying. They're all enjoying the much more freedom here. Like a lot of guys we met at the hostel, they, they, they're moving on already to go. You know, they've been traveling. They've already been in Thailand, now Cambodia. And you know, it was like a two month vacation, so funds are low, now they gotta go back home and do real jobs. Others are like scrambling to do teaching here. Interesting thing with that, teaching is just like old school Vietnam, print out a fake document, you know, print out a fake uh, TEFL, print out a fake diploma. <laughs> And Bob's your uncle. You can make up to 2,000 bucks a month. Teaching, don't really need to have a degree. Just need to have someone that knows someone at a school. And boom. <clears throat> Seen a lot of people do that in the past two days, like at two different hostels. So if you're looking for that kind of thing too, maybe like the, the bunk teaching, I call it, because you don't really have a fake degree and they don't seem to care about it here yet. Cambodia's got you. Vietnam's still checking all that paperwork. They're still seeing if it's all real. Uh, they're, they're actually checking each thing, verifying that you went to that cash uh, college and verifying that you got that TEPL certificate. Here they're not. I watched somebody become a <laughs> college graduate and TEPL certificate holder in under five minutes, <laughs> which is pretty funny. It's another house for rent. That's a cool little alley. like compounds down here it's like a little shortcut we have these in vietnam too 
with a shortcut right through a pretty heck, uh, heavy traffic area. And like only the locals usually know about it. <clears throat> so all in all, my review of, of Cambodia, it's very close to Vietnam. They're, you know, right up there. If you must have like extreme crazy, you know, women desires and like really want that heavy sex path feel, Thailand's probably still gonna be for you. That's not as prevalent here, but they've definitely got places where you can do that. But I wouldn't worry about doing that if I was you. You can just come here and uh, enjoy a vacation here. Enjoy a month or two stint, you know. Get to see all of the tourist stuff slowly without the pressure of needing to do everything. That's like where I'm starting to get now, where I've got to go to Siem Reap, I've got to get the islands done. And then maybe come back to here and stay for a few days and then go back home, get my funds up so we can afford the Philippines and the flights are cheaper. Then we'll head over to the Philippines. I already got ideas for, for new content in Vietnam, so. Chess is a very popular game here, which it's like a pachinko style thing in Vietnam, but here it's chess. All right, guys, that's the video. I got no more to say about it. I think like you can, here's another place if you want to find a hotel, this is a good area. Looks like a nice or, uh, apartment for rent. You got a balcony, you got parking, gated parking. So good area, if you want to check it out, there you go. So lots of apartments for rent. I heard they're really affordable, so. Anyways, I hope this helped you to make a decision about stuff. So stay frosty, thanks for watching. See you with more Cambodia video and content, peace out.